Mendes Signing Day 2011. Brock Wismiller here alongside Leatherneck head football coach Mark Hendrickson to talk to you about the 2011 signing class for Fighting Leatherneck Football. Coach, first off starting today, let's talk a little bit about this recruiting process, the direction of where you wanted to go with your recruiting for the 2011 season uh, with all the losses from what was a fine 2010 roster for your Leatherneck football team. We had some very specific needs that we wanted to make sure that we filled, and uh, I'm very proud of the coaching staff, Rock. Um, I'm confident that uh, you know the goals that we we set for ourselves in recruiting, we achieved them, and and uh, uh, very proud of what this coaching staff did. I also credit our players, our current players, a great deal in their in, in, in this ex with this successful recruiting class. Um, when the young men visit our campus and their parents for official visit weekends, um, there, there's no doubt that uh, you know, a great deal of, of the prospect's decision is based upon how they fit in with your current players. And, and we've got a great group of young men and uh, very proud of how, how they conduct themselves on those official visit weekends and how they represent the Leatherneck football family. Well, you alluded a little bit to there about the void of those players coming in and how they mesh with the current players, but uh, tell us a little bit about you know some of the graduation players that we lost here. Obviously, uh, two of the biggest losses for this team would be Matt Barr, at quarterback, and Kyle Glazier, at linebacker, but uh, there's a lot of other spots on that roster that we, we lost players to this past year to graduation that are, that are moving on with their careers. Uh, talk a little bit about how you and your staff looked at those voids on the field and what you're going to need to do to, to bring in some, some new talent. Well, of course, to, to fill those voids for this coming fall, um, you know, most of those spots will be filled with young men that have been in this program either for one or two or three years already, and you know that, that were the backup, so to speak, um, because those are the young men that, that got to learn firsthand, um, you know, from Matt and Kyle and from Alito um, and Brandon Kretschmer and Mike Lanfear with the old linemen, you know, the the the, the current players that return, you know, they, they got to learn from those positive role models um, of how to play that that position very specifically and how to play it at a very high level at a winning at a winning level. And uh, uh, and yet there will be a few of these players that we're going to talk about, the, the, the 23 new players and the 20 high school players that have joined us. There will be a few of those on the, on the field next fall. I'm glad you mentioned the 20 high school players on this signee class for 2011. Coach, you look at that and you talk about uh, building a program and building sustained success for a program. And as great as the JUCO transfers can be coming in and, and their instant impact on a program, it's really the four-year players that make an impact. You need to look no further than your four captains from this past year. Three of them, and Mike Steer and Kyle Glazier and Matt Barr, four-year players in this program. Talk a little bit about getting back to those roots with signing 20 high school players to come in for next year. Well, this program will always be built upon high school football players and, uh, and specifically even, you know, Illinois high school football players, obviously the home state of Western Illinois University. Um, and, and this year, you know, we're proud that we did sign 14 young men out of high schools from the state of Illinois. And yet, you know, when we set our goals about recruiting, we don't put any parameters on ourselves. We, we, we are just like if you're hiring somebody, we're in a nationwide search for the best players for our needs. And uh, again, I felt like our staff did a great job in, 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 in meeting those needs. Five of the young men are coming from the state of Florida um, and, and then and one from the state of Texas. Brock Westmiller alongside Leatherneck head football coach Mark Hendrickson talking about his 2011 football signee class here on signing day for 2011. Coach, with no further ado, let's get right into it. You mentioned 23 total signees for this year's roster. 20 of those high school signees and we'll start on the defensive side of the ball where you bring in 11 players five of those up front on the defensive line we know we're graduating a couple very good players on that defensive line and Mike Steren and Victor Vysoki uh, talk a little bit about these five defensive linemen that we have coming in here for Leatherneck football in 2011. Well I'll start off with a, a familiar name of with Leatherneck football and that's the Holschlag name. Um, we, we felt very fortunate to sign the twin brothers of, of big Jimmy Holschlag, our starting left guard. Um, Jimmy did a great job last year for us as a redshirt freshman at that left guard position. Um, and and, and we, were, we, we signed his twin brothers, Eddie and Chip, that, that also, of course, played their high school ball at Quincy Notre Dame. And uh, 
you know, they both join us as defensive ends. They're outstanding players. And, and like all of these young men, you know, uh, very passionate about the game of football because you can tell that when you watch these, these young men play the game on Friday night. Um, both of them were nicked up some during their high school year, didn't get to play every Friday night. And, uh, but I believe that just makes them even hungrier for when they're, they're able to continue their, their, their career with the Leathernecks. Also signed two other defensive ends, one out of uh, you know, Simeon High School, a great high school program for, for, for Division I football players up in Chicago, and that was in Demetrius Simpson. Um, very athletic, very explosive. Um, uh, you know, returned a lot of fumbles for touchdowns. I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, his junior year returned seven fumbles for touchdowns as a defensive end. Um, so he knows how to get to the ball. He knows what to do with it once he does pick up a loose ball. And then we also signed Montreal Williams, another outstanding athlete from Wheaton North High School. And, uh, you know, Montreal, just, again, a great nose for the ball, very quick and explosive. Um, and, uh, you know, excited about those four defensive ends. And yet we need another big nose guard as well. And, and very, very excited about our nose guard and, and signee. And that young man was Sean Sullivan out of Maine South High School. Maine South, the last three years in a row, have, have won the, the big class 8A state championship. And there's no question Sean had a lot to do with that. And currently, Sean is, has, has a record of 34-1 and one as a heavyweight wrestler with 30 pins this season. And uh, so, you know, he, he's, he knows how to use his – his strength, uh, you know, his body weight, and, uh, and leverage, leverage those offensive centers and guards very well. Well, I remember when Victor Vysoki came in as a freshman signee, he as well was a pretty successful high school wrestler, so hopefully we're seeing that same type of transition from high school wrestling and while well, coming out of Maine South and Sean Sullivan, a very successful high school football program. Moving to the linebacking core, now this is one spot where you think you lose your biggest name on defense in Kyle Glazier, but uh, really Coach Casey's built quite a bit of depth at that linebacker spot already. Not a lot of holes to fill right there, but still three linebackers that could come in, and at least one of them could possibly be an immediate impact type player. Correct, and, and of course we, we feel good that we have Theon Dixon with us right now in the offseason. Um, Theon joins us after transferring from Ball State. Um, exceptionally athletic at this position. We got to see quite a bit of tape on Theon, uh, you know, at, at Ball State before we made that decision, and, and we, we we knew right away when we saw him play that, that we wanted him here in part of Leatherneck football family. And then two two high school um, linebackers, one being J.J. Raffleson out of Lake Zurich, um, you know, outstanding player, um, re really similar to the linebackers that we've been bringing in, and, and as far as having some height. You know, he's listed at 6'3", 215, you know, height and, and size, and that will continue to fill out and gain strength over the years. Another 6'3", 215-pound linebacker out of Carmel High School um, in Chicago, and, and, and Luke and uh, Luke Vinagoni. And, uh, um, and, and Luke, another outstanding player. Uh, and, and those two, obviously, they, they, they listed at the same height and weight, and they played very similar in high school. Um, and, and in fact, those two know each other. They're already good friends at, uh, um, at schools nearby each other. And we, we feel very good about those three athletic linebackers, you know, joining our, our, our core. Take a look at the secondary on defense. Last year, number one in the Missouri Valley Football Conference in pass defense for the Leathernecks. You know, you need to replace a couple players back there and maybe get some more depth at that position as there were some injuries throughout the year uh, to the likes of a Tim Franken. And, Talk a little bit about now the three defensive backs that you do have coming in uh, next year on the defense side of the ball. Well, specifically, we wanted to get a couple of safeties in here, um, and, and we feel very good in the, the two safeties that we're bringing in, one being Kevin Kensel out of Lincoln Way West up near the Chicago area. Um, Kevin, an outstanding player, a uh, consistent player, um, and, uh, and again, his stats and, and his, his achievements are are, are off the charts, and they should be. But, of course, what we look at with all of these players, Brock, you know, is, is we evaluate their tape and you know, how they play the game of football. And, again, I've already mentioned it, but it could be said for every player um, because that's a priority for us. Young men 
that have a great passion for the game of football, and that's how Kevin plays, as does Jonathan Rollins, a young man out of Everglades uh, High School in Florida. You know, Jonathan Rollins uh, listed at 5'11", 195, very, very solid player, very physical, very quick and explosive. Um, you know, we, we were excited when we saw Jonathan on tape, and we're glad we are able to get that young man to be a leatherneck. And then one, one cornerback, and that, that is James Houston, um, out of a small, small school, Taylor County, um, out in Perry, Florida. Um, but very quick, again, very explosive, played wide receiver, was also a return specialist uh, for, for Taylor County. And James is going to come in as a corner. We feel very good about you know, his ability to, to, to play that spot based on, again, his overall athletic ability. We well, take a look at those three players right there. Quite a stable coming in. Kevin Kensel coming out of Lincoln Way, Lincoln Way West High School, excuse me. Uh, very talented group coming out of there. But then you look at a couple other defensive backs out of Florida, and uh, most notably Kieran James, one of our corners right now out of Florida. And I think we all remember how, what ended, what he did for us in that Coastal Carolina game, getting the game clinching interception. So hopefully, the same type of impact we're getting out of those Florida players moving forward in the future. We'll switch sides of the ball to where you're a little bit more involved, Coach. Offensively, uh, bringing in a few new players here, really kind of scattered with the numbers, really no dominant position you look to reload on. But the one that did bring in the most would be an offensive line, three new offensive linemen. We know we've got some holes to fill in there, but we've also got some players that have been around. Talk a little about these three young men that are coming in that will potentially be linemen in the near future. You know, the same scenario as defensive linemen. You play, you, you've got the most linemen on the field, uh, the, or – you know, the most players on every snap on the field are linemen. Uh, and therefore, we signed three offensive linemen at this point in time. Um, and two of those being, being out of the state of Illinois. Um, I'll start off with Ryan Ricketts from Galesburg High School. Ryan, an outstanding player on both sides of the ball. He, for a big man, he played every snap this year at offensive center and at nose guard for Galesburg. And you know, we had Ryan in our summer camp. And, and, and we, we feel very, very good about the success he'll have with us in the future uh, coming in on the offensive side of the ball. Cody Funk, um, an offensive lineman out of El Paso Gridley High School. And uh, not a real big school, but a very, a very large and talented uh, um, athlete. You know, Cody played half of this season at tight end, um, was very successful. We've seen him make diving catches on tape. And he played the other half of the season at, at offensive tackle. And uh, uh, we feel very good about, you know, his future development in the program. And then an offensive lineman out of Palm Beach Central in Florida, and that's Brandon De La Cruz. Uh, Brandon, uh, you know, listed at 6'3", 285, very similar in size. In fact, they're listed the same, I see, with Ryan Ricketts. Um, uh, both very powerful and, uh, you know, excited about Brandon joining as well. Tight end being a position you, you mentioned a little bit about, uh, Cody Funk and his maybe versatility to be able to play both tight end and offensive line in high school. Uh, we took a look at Allie Walker this past year who transitioned from offensive line to tight end. Uh, you take a look here, you really only target or bring in one tight end on this signing class. Uh, talk a little bit about that with the uh, loss of Drew Helton out of graduation, uh, bringing in one tight end now for this signing class. A little bit about uh, what your thought process was bringing in a freshman out of Rochester. Well, Rochester, of course, won the state championship this year um, after just about winning it the year before. And, uh, you know, this young man has is, is certainly been one of their key players in his varsity years there, and that's in Taylor Hill. Um, he's listed at 6'5", 235. It's really, that's right on the size that Taylor is right now. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he, he was an outstanding tight end in defensive end at Rochester. Um, and... Uh, you know, again, a young man that played just about all the time both ways, uh, probably will settle in, of course, and be a tight end for us. And, he, again, he, his talent level is exactly what we're looking for at that spot. Um, tall, fast, you know, he blocks like an offensive lineman, and yet he can run and catch like a receiver. Uh, one Switching into the backfield now, one luxury for the next this year. Really don't have to look to replace anybody at fullback. You bring back both your fullbacks and Josh Gable and Rick Richardson that saw – Pretty much uh, the majority of the snaps at the fullback position, but got another one added to the roster for this upcoming year. Talk to us a little bit about Larry Harris and what he brings to Western. Larry Harris is very physical. Um, you know, based on high school tape, some people might argue the most physical player, you know, out of, out of these signees. 
and yet uh, that be that would be a tough argument because a lot of them are physical. But but the things that Larry did both as a junior and a senior very impressive. As a junior, played offensive guard at Rock Island High School, and then was moved to the fullback position. Uh, we had Larry in camp as well. Um, you know, great mindset all the time, always with a smile on his face, always looking for the next man to hit. Uh, we'll be a perfect fullback, you know, for our system. Right alongside them in the backfield at running back. Last year we saw the signee class with Colton Ray and Bryce Flowers have a huge impact on Leatherneck football right away. Nico Watson coming in this year and Tony Jackson. Nico out of Rock Island, Illinois, and then Tony Jackson coming from Perry, Florida. Uh, talk a little bit about these two and what the potential impact would be. Probably not going to see that immediate impact out of them in their first year, but definitely players we could see down the road. The, 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 you're certainly right about that. You know, Nico Watson is a big back. You know, he's he's listed at six foot two forty, um, and uh, that's a big back considering he's still got a semester left of high school. Uh, we also had Nico in camp along with his teammate, fullback Larry Harris. Nico again impressed us in camp. With his, with his physical style of, of running the football. Um, and, uh, and again, you mentioned we, we, we had the new two backs last fall. Very successful with them, but Nico's that different dimension of being a big back. And uh, we specifically target, targeted uh, Nico as, you know, to, to come in and, and fill that role of being a big ball carrier. Um, the other back that we signed, uh, from, again, from Taylor County, uh, is a teammate, of course, of James Houston, and that's Tony Jackson. Tony, very versatile, also played defense, and you know, so we got to see him play physical defense as, long as, as well as being an outstanding running back and a good receiver out of the backfield. And, you know, Tony very much fits the mold of the two young men that, you know, that, that the Leatherneck fans saw play, play last fall for us. Uh, the receiving core for this offense last year, much of the reason why we had, one of the, had the top offense in the Valley, one of the top offenses in the entire nation this past year. Um, obviously going to lose to graduation Lito Senatus, really the impact wide receiver that we're losing. Only one wide receiver as a result of that because there was quite a bit of depth at that receiver position. But uh, Lawrence Oliver the third, or Trey, as I'm so told that he's going to be called, uh, talk a little bit about Trey Oliver out of Sandberg High School in Orland Park. A uh, little bit, maybe looks undersized right now on paper, but mm -hmm. talk about what you're expecting out of him progression-wise. Well, receivers, of course, come in come in different sizes and different abilities and, and, and set of skills. Trey is a smaller receiver um, and, and yet very skilled as far as making people miss. Uh, you know, fans will enjoy, uh, uh, you know, clicking on his highlight tape, that's for sure. Um, you know, can return punts, can return kicks. You're always looking for, you know, your skilled players, whether it be the receivers, the backs, or the defensive backs that can fulfill that role as well. And Trey did that very successfully in high school and, and just an outstanding receiver, made a lot of big plays through, through passes for, uh, on the reverse pass of the receiver. Uh, very skilled young man, great student athlete, and you know, very excited to add him you know, to, our, to our receiving core. Wrapping up on the offensive side of the ball, probably again the biggest loss for the Leather next would be Matt Barr at quarterback. Uh, Will Lunt, who started many of the games in the in absence of Matt Barr two years ago, uh, will definitely contend for that starting job, but you're bringing in two quarterbacks, one of them a junior college transfer, one of them will be a true freshman. Uh, let's get into it and talk about these two young men at quarterback and what they might bring to Western. Well, again, we've mentioned uh, Josh Hudson uh, and the fact that he's on campus now, started at, at, at mid midterm, and uh, we're very excited and glad to have Josh with us right now. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, he's going to be able to compete firsthand with Will, obviously, come spring ball, and along with the other two quarterbacks, Cody and Carter, um, and I, I'm excited to see that competition. Uh, all four of those young men can play football for us. And uh, so it, it's just it's exciting to have four quality quarterbacks coming into spring football practice. And, and of course, Josh being here now, he's going to be able to learn the system, uh, you know, mentally, you know, before we, before we put those pads on. Um, and, then, and then we were very, we felt very fortunate to sign Giovanni McCray. Um, uh, the quarterback out of high school, out of South Dade High School. Um, and, uh, boy, based on tape, we, we looked for the best high school quarterback we could find. And without a doubt, we thought that, that Giovanni, who we call G.O., that G.O. Was that, was that quarterback that could come in here and lead this offense, you know, the most successfully of all the high school quarterbacks we saw. Feel very good about him joining us. Take it a look. I'm going to mention, you know, also, Brock, we, we have another ball player that joined us at, at, at semester in Tynan, 
uh, Murray. And, and Tynu was an outstanding quarterback in, in junior college, and yet he's such a, a, a fantastic athlete. You know, Tynu might end up being a receiver. He might be our long snapper as well. And uh, we're very glad that, that he's with us this semester. Well, I think what we saw, especially out of the FCS playoffs this past year, is that a versatile player can really take you a long way. There was a number of players like that, uh, particularly from Villanova, that kind of um, Cesar that had his way with Appalachian State in the playoffs. So those versatile players really can play an important role in the game. And you might not have a spot for him as a starter, but he might be able to fill three or four roles on the field. Uh, finally, to wrap things up here with this signing class, uh, last but certainly not least, we look at a uh, punter kicker and Michael Shro Michael. Schrobel and talk about Chris Fox graduating as a punter, four-year starter at the punter position, and um, with uh, Charlie Jewett as well, graduating as a place kicker and, and handling all the kickoffs for the Leathernecks. Um, talk about how Michael Schrobel might, you know, fill in one of those voids, if voids, if not both of them. Yeah, Michael's a very talented young man coming out of high school. I uh, feel very fortunate about him joining us. Um, you know, very, very strong leg on kickoffs, and, uh, and then, you know, his field goal ability – uh, you know, in high school was outstanding. Uh, he had three attempts as a senior of beyond 50 yards. He made all three. That's unusual for a high school kicker. That's unusual for a college kicker. Uh, and, he, and he punted uh, for, for his high school, too, out of Houston, Texas, out of Clone, Klein Oak High School. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, so he will compete for all three jobs, and it'll be interesting to see how that falls. But uh, uh, very glad that Michael's joining us, and uh, – because he might be in that starting lineup next fall, being in one of those roles or all three. And, of course, uh, we opened the season down in, down in his home state of Texas. Well, we'll have to see if he can earn a spot on that travel roster for that first game. Heading down to Texas against Sam Houston State September 2nd, kicking off officially the 2011 season. Before we get to September 2nd, though, we need to take a look at what's ahead in the spring here. We've just gone over a list of 23 signees. Three of those, as you, as you mentioned, are already on campus enrolled in classes and we'll participate in full practice in spring ball coming up here. Uh, taking a look at that, we've got some important dates for our fans out there. April 2nd, we'll have a scrimmage slash practice up in the Quad Cities. April 9th, we'll go back to Naperville like we did last year and have a similar, similar scrimmage slash practice. And then it'll all wrap up with April 23rd, the Bruce Craddock Memorial Scrimmage out here at Hanson Field. Uh, quite literally, be the last time that we play on a natural surface out at Hanson Field. So... A lot of excitement there around things going on in the spring. Uh, talk a little bit about the spring schedule and what you and your staff are most looking forward to. Uh, you did mention three important dates there, Barack, although maybe the most important one for the coaching staff and the players is our opening date, practice number one. We start up on that Friday when we return from spring break, and uh, you know, that will be Friday, March 25th. And then, uh, as you mentioned, we're, we're, we're scheduled to be up at, you know, at Rock Island High School on April 2nd. And uh, we're excited to go up there in front of the, the alumni and the fans uh, in, in uh, the Quad Cities. And then April 9th, we'll return to Naperville North High School. And, we, of course, we have a lot of alumni in Chicago and a lot of our, our players from the Chicago area. And it gives their, their parents and grandparents and family members and friends a chance to see them scrimmage. Uh, and then we'll be right back here on Hanson Field, as you mentioned, uh, April 23rd for the, for, for the spring ball game. Uh, of course, right now we're, we're in the off-season workouts with running and lifting taking place every day. And, uh, you know, this 2011 team is very excited about, uh, about you know, just simply working very hard right now to improve themselves prior to spring practice. And I do apologize. I was wrong on my date. September 1st is the opener at Sam Houston State. That's when we'll open up the 2011 season. You can catch that game on the Love and Sports Network. Coach, we'd like to thank you for all your time here this afternoon, speaking about all recruits, giving our fans something to hear about uh, with this signing class. And uh, best of luck throughout the rest of spring football now and then rolling into fall camp here over the summer. Thank you, Brock. Uh, the, the, the players have, have worked extremely hard uh, here early in the offseason, and I know that's not going to change. They've had a great mindset from the, from the start, uh, and we'll be right back at it uh, first thing tomorrow morning. We'd like to thank all of our fans for tuning in. More coverage of spring football coming on GoLeathernecks.com. And we'd especially like to thank Western Illinois Director of Athletics Media Services, Patrick Osterman, for all the information he provided here with signing day for 2011. On behalf of Leatherneck head coach Mark Hendrickson, I'm Brock Wismeller. Thanks for tuning in.